गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर सिक्स ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिसेंटली द इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया स्टार्टेड द मेरा पहला वोट देश के लिए कैंपेन विद विच मिनिस्ट्री सो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन कंडक्टेड दिस मेरा पहला वोट देश के लिए कैंपेन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी अप टू सिक्स ऑफ मार्च बेसिक एम इज टू एंगेज एंड इनकरेज द यूथ इन द इलेक्टोरल प्रोसेस एंड हु इज द यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांट कमीशन चेयरमैन इट इज एम जगदेश कुमार एंड ही इशूड अ कॉल टू इंस्पायर एंड मोबिलाईज फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर्स अर्जिंग ऑल टू सपोर्ट द कैंपेन एंड दिस नेशन वाइड इनिशिएटिव in collaboration with the election commission of india seeks to raise electoral awareness among the youth and it would foster universal enlightened participation in the election right so election commission of india has started this campaign along with the education ministry who is our education minister dharmendra pradhan okay next is kula sekara pattinam space port recently seen in the news is located in which indian state so prime minister narendra modi has inaugurated this particular space port in the state of tamil nadu and this is the second space port after the satish dhawan space center this facility will specialize in launching small satellite launch vehicles commercially and it spans in 2350 acres and it features overall 35 facilities including the launch pads and the rocket integration areas okay so the unique advantage of this space port is launching directly south over the indian ocean which would save the fuel for small rocket launches compared to the existing sites and this project is estimated to cost 986 crore rupees which would definitely boost india's space capabilities right so this space port lies in the state of tamil nadu next is Recently which South American country has declared a health emergency due to the rising cases of dengue fever This country is Peru and Peru declares a health emergency as dengue fever cases rises in this country and the government activates the emergency in 20 out of 25 regions due to the rapid rise in the cases which totals to over 31000 with uh, 32 deaths till now okay and health minister of this country says that it is because of el nino's impact and it causes high temperature and heavy rains since to 2023 and it facilitates mosquito breeding and the declaration now needs the fund transfers to affected areas and facilitates the swift deployment of medical personnel right so peru has recently declared a health emergency due to the rising cases of dengue fever Now next is recently the National Institute of Ayurveda signed an agreement with which country to promote Ayurveda and Thai traditional medicine So National Institute of Ayurveda in Jaipur has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Thai Traditional and Alternative Medicine Thailand in February 2024 and this mou is for academic collaboration in ayurveda and thai traditional medicine so the national institute of ayurveda also has collaborations with other universities institutes and organizations in different countries like malaysia and korea okay here correct answer would be thailand that is c option which state recently passed a bill aimed at curbing illegal immigration so haryana assembly passed in total 9 bills including the haryana registration and regulation of travel agents bill 2024 the basic aim is to curb illegal immigration and address the issue of unregistered travel agents exploiting the youth so home minister of haryana highlighted the seriousness of the problem also a bill to regulate private coaching institutions was passed to protect the students and guardians interest and this bill was part of the concluding day of the week long budget session okay so recently haryana state has passed a bill the basic aim of which is to curb the illegal immigration 
Recently, who has been appointed as the new CEO of the World Gold Council for India? This is Mr. Sachin Jain. He has been appointed as the new CEO of the World Gold Council for India in February 2024, and he will join the World Gold Council from D Beers, where he was held several senior roles for the past 13 years. Also, he has a deep understanding of the Indian consumer and jewelry market. Fine. So, who is the new CEO of World Gold Council for India? Answer is Mr. Sachit Jain. What is the theme of the Rare Disease Day 2024? First of all, we celebrate this day on 29th of February, and on this day we highlight awareness and support for those with rare medical conditions. And this year the theme is Share Your Colors. This theme basically emphasizes the collaboration for individuals who are facing the rare diseases. And uh, how does the WHO, World Health Organization, defines the rare disease? So it defines the rare disease as it is a kind of lifelong disorder with a prevalence of 10 or fewer cases per 10,000 people. And this day aims to shed light on these infrequent conditions, promoting understanding and assistance for affected individuals globally. Right. So two things are important. When do we observe the Rare Diseases Day? Answer is 29th of February. And what is the theme for this year? Answer is Share Your Colors. Okay. Tabi festival recently seen in the news is celebrated in which state or the union territory so this is a four day festival in jammu and kashmir and recently it is started on 1st of march okay this festival basically highlights the region's art culture and heritage and with this it emphasizes jammu's diverse art forms and cultural heritage and the festival features seminars workshops folk music street theater etc okay so basically it provides a platform for youth creativity and encourages the discussions with the expert and the event showcases entrepreneurship innovation local cuisine and the organic products from women's ngo groups in the himalayan region culminating at the university of jammu fine so tabi festival is celebrated in jammu and kashmir recently prime minister of india launched the country's first indigenous green hydrogen fuel cell in land waterway vessel in which indian state so prime minister narendra modi launched india's first indigenous green hydrogen fuel cell in land waterway vessel in tamil nadu under the harith nauka initiative okay so this project signifies india's commitment to innovative green energy solutions and talking about hydrogen fuel cells they are uh, used in transportation material handling stationery and they are kind of portable and uh, they have also emergency backup power so that's why it plays a crucial role in india's push for sustainable and cost effective alternate fuel right so indian prime minister has launched the country's very first indigenous green hydrogen fuel cell inland water vessel in tamil nadu state which organizations recently collaborated to launch the women exporters in the digital economy fund here answer is the international trade center and the world trade organization that is option number c okay so both of these organizations have jointly initiated the women exporters in the digital economy fund with a substantial investment of 50 million dollars fine so this global fund aims to support the women led businesses and entrepreneurs in developing the economies and the least developed countries by facilitating the adoption of the digital technologies and basic objective is to enhance the online presence of these enterprises which would enable them to thrive in the digital economy right so which two organizations are involved in the white fund answer is itc means international trade center and the world trade organization pancheshwar multipurpose project sometimes seen in the news is a binational hydropower project between which two countries So despite the recent India Nepal agreement this multipurpose project discussions remains deadlocked and it was established through a mahakali treaty in the year 1996 and it is a cross border hydropower initiative on the mahakali river the goal is to enhance energy production and irrigation in both the nations so it features a 315 meters dam that is sharda dam in india basic aim is to generate 6480 megawatt electricity also it targets 
irrigating 1 lakh 30,000 hectares in Nepal and 2 lakh 40,000 hectares in Indian territory. Fine. So this uh, Pancheshwar multipurpose project is a bi-national hydropower project between India and Nepal. NICDC has signed a memorandum of understanding with which institution to enhance the development of greenfield smart cities. So what is this NICDC? It is the National Industrial Corridor Development Corporation. So they have signed this MOU with IIT Delhi to help identify the best places in India to develop the green field industrial smart cities. Okay. So this collaboration aims to contribute to India's goal of becoming a $5 trillion economy and it emphasizes the role of technology, research and collaboration in building a strong and lasting future, right? So they have signed this MOU with IIT Delhi so as to enhance the development of greenfield smart cities. Next is, this northeastern state recently adopted a resolution against the center's decision to fence the India-Myanmar border and scrap the FMR agreement with Myanmar. This is Mizoram and uh, in February, 60 member Mizoram assembly adopted a resolution against the center's decision to fence the India-Myanmar border and scrap the free movement regime agreement with the neighboring country and this FMR allows the people living in both sides of the border to travel 16 kilometers into each other's territory without a visa. Okay, so this is the Mizoram state. Recently, which country's parliament voted to approve Sweden's bid to join the NATO, making it the 32nd nation to join the alliance? This is an extremely important question. Here, answer is option number C, that is Hungary. The parliament of Hungary voted to ratify Sweden's bid to join NATO, making Sweden the 32nd member of this alliance and Sweden applied to join NATO in 2022 after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine right and new members must be approved by all existing NATO members so Hungary was the last country to block Sweden's membership accusing Sweden of being hostile to it and the addition of the two Nordic countries will definitely strengthen the alliance's capabilities which would strengthen its position in the high north and the Baltic Sea right and which is the 31st nation to join the NATO it is the country Finland right next is recently which Indian received an honorary knighthood from UK's King Charles III here your answer would be Sunil Bharti Mittal that is option number B and King Charles III of the United Kingdom has awarded Sunil Bharti Mittal, who is the founder and chairman of the Bharti Enterprises, a honorary knighthood. So this honor is titled as Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire and it is one of the highest honors given by the British sovereign to the civilians, right? So here answer is the option Sunil Bharti Mittal and who is he? He is the uh, founder and chairman of Bharti Enterprises. Next question is, Global Waste Management Outlook 2024, recently seen in the news, is published by which one of the following organization? So the Global Waste Management Outlook 2024 is co-published by United Nations Environment Programme and ISWA and it highlights the key trends basically. Predictions indicate the municipal solid waste will surge from 2.3 to 3.8 billion tons by the end of 2050 and the direct cost of global waste management is at $252 billion in 2020 and now it is projected to nearly double by the end of 2050 without immediate intervention. So barriers include, for example, insufficient urgency recognition, incomplete data and climate impact under estimation. Also, informal sector undervaluation is a factor and inadequate legislation is another problem. Fine. So this uh, global waste management outlook is published by United Nations Environment Program that is A option. Headquarter lies in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. Headquarters of UNDP lies in New York. Headquarters of UNESCO lies in Paris and headquarters of IMF lies in Washington, DC. Next is how many railway stations have successfully achieved the prestigious Eat Right Station certification? Here answer is 150. 150 railway stations and 6 metro stations have earned this coveted Eat Right Station certification which is a part of the Eat Right India movement and it is the initiative of Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. So this initiative mandates 
stringent food safety hygiene and nutrition standards for all the vendors at certified station right here answer is 150 recently which country's parliament has approved a controversial anti lgbtq bill the human sexual rights and family values bill here answer is ghana that is c option the parliament of ghana has endorsed this human sexual rights and family values bill awaiting presidential approval and this legislation seeks to preserve traditional family values criminalizing the lgbtq identification with potential three year prison sentences also don't forget that the supporters of lgbtq activities may face up to five years in prison so ghana currently prohibits the gay acts and uh, they have uh, some type of penalty for it by a maximum three years of jail term and the bill reflects a tightening stance on lgbtq rights and it sparks both domestic and international debates now right so ghana parliament has approved this anti-lgbtq bill which is the human sexual rights and family values bill recently who has been appointed as the director general of the national security guard here answer is the option daljeet singh chaudhary he is a 1990 badge IPS officer and recently he has been appointed as the Director General of the National Security Guard and currently he is the Director General of Sashastra Seema Bal. So he takes on the added responsibility for leading the NSG and this move signifies a significant development in India's security apparatus enhancing his role in shaping and overseeing critical aspects of national defense right so daljeet singh chaudhary has been appointed as the director general of the national security guard recently which state government has issued a directive for the adoption of the one time scheme across all urban local bodies here answer is a option telangana and telangana government mandates the one time scheme adoption in all urban local bodies including the GHMC. Basic aim is to ease the financial burdens on the property owners and this initiative seeks to alleviate the concerns of mounting the area's interest on property tax payment and it provides a strategic solution to ease the financial strain across the urban municipalities in the state. Right. So Telangana has issued a directive for the adoption of this one-time scheme across all urban local bodies. Next is Recently, which two countries formally opposed the adoption of Investment Facilitation for Development Agreement? These countries are India and South Africa. They have opposed the Investment Facilitation for Development Agreement with at the 13th Ministerial Conference of the World Trade Organization, which took place in Abu Dhabi from 26th to 29th of February. There it saw over 120 countries advocating for IFD to enhance the investment and business climate. India basically argued that IFD is a non-trade issue outside the multilateral trade bodies framework while a China-led group sought to make the proposal binding through Annexer 4 of the World Trade Organization. Fine. Simply you have to remember that India and South Africa are the two countries that formally opposed the adoption of investment facilitation for development agreement while 120 countries favored it. Okay. Which day is observed as the World Seagrass Day? So, World Seagrass Day is observed annually on 1st of March and this day highlights the significance of seagrass in the marine ecosystem. And this year, what is the theme of this day? Theme is Healthy Seagrass, Healthy Planet. This is the theme. Okay. Seagrass is actually the sole flowering plant in a marine environment and in co it comprises over 60 species worldwide and it acts as effective carbon sink and uh, it supports marine life as well with vital nutrient and uh, prominently it grows along the coastlines globally and it plays a crucial role in stabilizing the water quality making it a key component of a thriving marine ecosystem right so world seagrass day is observed annually on 1st of march and this year the theme is healthy seagrass healthy planet which one of the following company recently collaborated with Mahagenko to develop renewable energy parks in the state of Maharashtra? So NTPC Creed Energy Limited collaborates with the Maharashtra State Power Generation Company Limited to establish the renewable energy parks in the state of Maharashtra. And this joint venture aligns with the green energy initiatives and it bolsters India's energy transition goals. Basic aim is to build a gigawatt scale 
renewable energy parks in the state which showcases their commitment to sustainable development and clean energy sources right here answer is ntpc green energy limited recently which payment bank signed a memorandum of understanding with hindustan zinc limited to enhance the financial inclusion in the rural rajasthan this is india post payments bank and they have signed this collaboration with hindustan zinc limited to boost the financial inclusion in the rural rajasthan and this collaboration aims to offer convenient access to the bank accounts pension products savings and investment schemes also it empowers beneficiaries to serve as individual business correspondents for i PPB services promoting the government's social welfare schemes and facilitating income generating loans in this region right so india post payments bank has signed this mou with hindustan zinc limited so as to enhance the financial inclusion in rural rajasthan what is the theme of zero discrimination day 2024 first of all we observe zero discrimination day on 1st of march and it is dedicated to advocate for every individual's right to a life free from discrimination and uh, it is initiated by united nation aids and uh, this global observance raises awareness about the discrimination's harmful effects and it promotes equality compassion and the respect so it this year the theme is to protect everyone's health protect everyone's rights that is the option okay which ministry recently launched the alliance for global good gender equity and equality here answer is b option ministry of women and child development who is our minister for this smriti irani and she has revealed the logo and website for the alliance for global good gender equity and equality in a ceremony that was attended by bill gates and chandrajit banerjee so there uh, she emphasizes india's leadership in women's empowerment also she highlighted international support that is right now needed and uh, this alliance basically aligns with uh, pm modi's vision for women led development and it seeks to consolidate the practices exchange knowledge and attract the investment in women's health education and entrepreneurship okay so here answer is ministry of women and child development next is how much funding has the union cabinet approved for the international big cat alliance so the union cabinet has officially launched the international big cat alliance with a one time budgetary allocation of 150 crore rupees from the indian government until 2028 so it was initiated by the prime minister in april 2023 to commemorate the project tigers 50th anniversary and it aims to foster the cooperation among 97 range countries for the conservation of seven big cat species and its multifaceted approach includes governance structures like a general assembly a council and a secretariat along with the financial support from the indian government right so here answer is 150 crore rupees that is the option recently which ministry signed a memorandum of understanding with isro on urban frame survey using the bhuvan so ministry of statistics and program implementation has partnered with isro for the urban frame surveys using the bhuvan and uh, ufs is managed by the field operations division of nsso and it utilizes the compact units in urban areas with 120 to 150 households and it is executed in five year phase it acts as a sampling frame for large scale socio economic surveys so the digital implementation of ufs occurred for the first time during phase 2017 to 2022 and it employs the bhuvan platform for the data collection right here answer is is ministry of statistics and program implementation what is the projected gdp growth rate for india in the october to december 2023 quarter 3 so india's gdp growth rate for the october to december 2023 quarter 3 is estimated at 43.72 lakh crore rupees against 40.35 lakh crore rupees in 2022 to 23 so it showcase a growth rate of 8.4% right so india's gdp growth rate for the october to december quarter 3 2023 is estimated at 43.72 lakh crore rupees so the projected gdp growth rate for india in this time period is 8.4% the last question is 
Recently, the government of India has taken several measures to support the flu-cured Virginia tobacco growers in which Indian states. So, Indian government has implemented supportive measures for flu-cured Virginia tobacco growers in the states of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. Basically, they are cured through a heat exposure process and it is favored for its mild, sweet flavor and high sugar content commonly used in the cigarette blends. So, predominantly it is produced in India's Mysore and the Hassan districts and it's a vital crop in the global market. So, the government's initiative aims to bolster the livelihoods of FCV tobacco farmers in these regions, right? So, here answer is Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka state. So, these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. I hope you have liked the session. Also, there was no revision session because already we have missed the three lectures in the past few days. So, here there is a need to cover them, right? Now, let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide, you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two, three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Meenus Hatsana signing off.